everybody, and welcome to an extra small edition of the Slice of Gaming podcast. At least that's my assumption. We could be going on for two hours. Who knows? You know, we, we never know in this time of day. Uh, I'm joined by only one other person today, and that's Beef Hammer. Yes. Hello, everyone. A lot of different schedules, issues in that regard. So Beef was the only one able to make it today. He he was screaming to be on, aka I messaged him right before the podcast if he was able yeah. to. And that was like a perfect timing with doing it a little earlier. Everything's put, worked out for me. Well, we don't got much news to go today, but we wanted to keep our consistent schedule. So we thought it would still, you know, we might as well have a podcast today. If you want to check us out, we're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts are caught. Check us out on Twitter at a slice of gaming. But let's move right into the video because uh, we got a decent amount of news, like small news topics. Nothing like major, major happened this week. The first one is Emio finally got revealed. Uh, if you remember last week, we had that teaser about Emio. You know, who is Emio? What is Emio? All that good stuff. But now we actually got Emio in a full show reveal. Uh, to Nintendo of Twitter revealed this two days ago. It's a Famicom Detective Club game. Uh, mm-hmm. Unmasked the truth in a dark, twisted thriller for Nintendo Switch, Emio the Sm- Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club launches August 29th. Now, we were actually kind of predicting that this was probably going to be their August or December game, one of those two months, because both slots were open, but it seems like they're going for August. Beef, what was your initial reaction to this reveal? Um, well, like, I kind of, I didn't predict this exactly, but when they did the whole Emia thing, kind of because, like, it was, you know, just a Twitter announcement, I was like, I have a, I had the bad feeling, well, not bad feeling, but like a feeling like this probably is going to be something that in the end isn't, you know, a huge new game or new IP. But I obviously didn't predict this. So this, but this kind of in line with what I expected when they kind of were teasing it. So it doesn't mean too much for me. I think I get the impression for a lot of people. It's like, yeah, now I, I don't care as much, but it is kind of interesting, you know, like, because people say, like, yeah. Games that have a series that's been almost gone for 30 years now. It's like, I've just they may have remake it now. This it's kind of interesting that going with it. Yeah, it's interesting that they stuck with the name Famicom Detective Club, considering yeah. you know the Famicom is we never even got the Famicom over here. Mm-hmm. It's, it was the NES for us. Uh, I, I think it's cool that Nintendo is kind of revitalizing their older IP like this. We always ask them, hey, use your older IP. I will admit. I 100% understand the disappointment for a lot of people. Um, I don't know if you sit with, coincide with that, but it's like you have this thought of like, oh, Nintendo doing a horror game, an M-rated game, and it is a visual novel, which is still cool like mm-hmm. for the visual novel audience. You know, I, I enjoy visual novel here or there, but it's not like a showstopper game. It's nothing like an Eternal Darkness where it's like, oh, that was a big deal when it came out on the GameCube because it was this M-rated Nintendo game that they published, they, you know, had a developer work on for their platform. It would have been interesting to see like what an actual like full-on full-scale horror game from Nintendo would be, whereas this is very much going to be a visual novel M-rating, you know, you you played certain visual novels, like the M-rating is very much like Themes of Suicide which we saw in the, um, ESRB uh, rating for the game, uh, murder, all that type of uh, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So the M rating makes sense. It is interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to check this one out, but I am intrigued by this game. I, this is one I want to keep my eyes on, see how reviews look. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, I think people are hyped because, yeah, it would be interesting if this was like Nintendo like doing at least something like a Nier, like the, the new Resident Evils or Silent Hills. Or, you know, like, even the Toad Doctor saying, you know, 3D, but... So, yeah, this isn't too much... I mean, it's a little interesting, because, again, like, I still think Nintendo's only ever done, like, less than 10 M-rated games in the whole, like, in the whole, like, like, what, 40 years? It's, like, seven, yeah, it's something very small, so it's, like, still interesting, maybe, we'll see how dark it goes, but, yeah, I'm not, like, I'm probably not gonna check it out either way. Do you think you could name those, uh, games? I know I've heard most of them. The, um, it's the ends. It's mostly the older ones because I know, like, obviously, it's Devil's Third. I know Devil's Third. I know Eternal Darkness, the Bayonetta games. That's four, and I think I can only name those four. There was yeah. a shooter on the GameCube. 
Um, oh, wait, yeah, the joke, Geist, that one. Geist. <laughs> and they mm. also did Ninja Guide and Razor's Edge. Yeah, I they think that's the one. Which is so I think weird. That... I don't know why they did that. <laughs> uh, it's I know, they do that with... Nintendo's that was some third-party games. It's kind of like... I, but yeah, I know that's obviously it's, the one I think no one's like that for members, yeah. And they also did a Fatal Frame game, which was digital. Oh, yeah, I did remember that. It would be cool to see Fatal Frame come back and see. I was about to say, though. that's also, yeah, if anything, I think that's kind of what people would more. I, if it was a Fatal Frame, I think people would be way more excited than just a visual novel, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Do you think it would have been better if this was just revealed at the direct, or would this, uh, is this a nice marketing cycle for this game? I mean, it it was because, like we've talked about, there's not much news. There hasn't been much news for two weeks. This was way bigger than I expected people to make it out to be. So I think it kind of worked, even though now there's like this kind of letdown. I still think so. I guess it worked. I'm not entirely sure why they decided this particular game to be the one. But I don't know. I mean, it's also, you know, it's hard to help because... Japanese company were mostly seeing how the American reaction. Maybe it's in Japan they were like really hyped for this. So because because like I said, there were the remasters or remakes of the originals. So and they must have sold well enough. So maybe this is more of a Japanese audience thing than Americans. Well, yeah, that and also I think the uh, the Metroid producer I forget his name, but he very much um, Sakamoto. Is that correct? Sakamoto. Yes, you're correct. That's a, at least his last name. But he yes. very much spearheaded this. Y- Yoshio Sakamoto, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, makes with, sense. And that is also an interesting pause. Yeah, they showed like some of the people working on this are kind of the old head, so it's kind of interesting in that respect. Mm-hmm. Well, let's move into our next topic. I'm interested to see how that game does. Real quick, Metacritic prediction, or open critic. Oh. What are you thinking? Mm-hmm. This feels like a low eighties, high seventies. I, I was gonna okay. I was gonna say high seventies if I had to guess. Yeah, because weirdly, like some of these games get like you either get like the ninety plus visual novels, or they always sit around like the high seventies, low eighties. It's, a, it's I a didn't even watch. Market. I didn't even see the trailer. That probably would have helped and see, but just I mean, it's it's so hard to tell because obviously it's all story. And you get very low story in the trailer, so yeah. But yeah, I think I, that. That could be a. It could maybe bring the game up if it is like, oh wow, this is actually a, an amazing game. I hope so. Yeah, I want to try. I'm interested in it. Moving into our next topic, Splitgate Two was announced. Uh, coming 2025. They even put on their Twitter announcement of it. We are so back. <laughs> uh, did you play much Splitgate Beef? It seems like a beef game. I know, and I actually wait. I think I downloaded it. I but I did not actually play it because. I don't know, maybe, I'm trying to remember what was, I knew, kind of famously, it was right before Halo Infinite's launch, and I'm like, was it just because I was like, eh, waiting for that, or, or not, I don't even know if it was the launch, or like, that time it popped off again, if it was one of those uh, situations. It was 2021, it released on consoles. It was 2019. Oh, PC that makes, only. yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, because obviously, I remember hearing about, it, it's like, the Halo game with portals, so it's interesting, but. I actually never did get around to it, and maybe that's just because, yeah, like, I didn't know many people playing it at that time, so even though, yeah. so I was interested in it, and I guess you'll give us more details on what exactly they're doing for this one, the sequel. Uh, hang on, let me, there were some details. They think they did an interview. It seems like they want to make uh-huh. this class-based, like, at least what I've read, it's a class-based mm-hmm. Shooter. It's not a hero shooter. They very adamantly said that, <laughs> which I think they saw the cod cords and it's like, no, 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 this is not a hero shooter. And more maps, more personality, more characters. Because if you played Split Gate, I, I played Split Gate for a good amount with my friends, and like it's kind of a personalityless shooter. <laughs> in I can I can see that. Yeah, you just select your character, you do the shooting, and you do the portals, and it's re- it was a really fun gameplay loop, but like there was not a lot to it as a game. It felt very much like it was in beta in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. It seems like with this, it's like, hey, this isn't just like Split Gate 2. This is like very much Split Gate 1, but like what we our full vision is. And yeah. I, that gets me interested. I, I really liked Split Gate 1. I thought it was a ton of fun, and I just want to see them expand upon that idea. Yeah, I think they have, because I remember at least seeing, like, oh, it's obviously going to be bigger budget, because I think someone's actually backing this one, so it's Mm -hmm. kind of, 
we'll see how it goes. I have like some hope. I'll probably play it. But like you said, like I got that is probably the one thing I remember from the original is yeah, it did seem like the concept was there, but like I don't know, not the style. Like you said, lack of personality. So we'll see. I kind of I think it could be good, but. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we'll just have to wait and see, because I saw some controversy about the whole, like, now it's class-based, but, like yeah, I said, people, not People were worried shooter. that it meant hero shooter, yeah, basically, yeah. but, like, it's very much like you select a different class, kind of like COD, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, I'm interested in that one. Do you think this is an early or late 2025? Because I feel like it's point. early if you're going to announce it now. and you won't, I know. Like, That's... You don't want that long of a marketing cycle. I know. Let's go with that. It's so hard to tell, especially nowadays, because even right now, like, it's not early 2025, isn't, like, been, like, kind of, like, not a lot of games have settled in there, so we'll see, because maybe mm-hmm. it's, like, how crowded do you want to be in? But I think, I mean, especially with multiplayer games, though, right now, there's not too many right now, so I feel like whenever they come out, they should be fine. So, yeah, probably early, because, like you said, just announcing it, I think that's right. Sounds good. We will see. Uh, I'll be keeping my eyes on the trigger for that one. One thing I won't be keeping my... Did I say eyes on the trigger? <laughs> you said keep... Yes. Yes, oh, yes. you meant finger. Yeah, finger, on, finger the on the trigger. There we go. I was going to say it sounded right, but then when you brought it up, yeah. Um, I'm gonna. One thing I won't be keeping my finger on the trigger for is Halo Season 3, as that thing is dead. <laughs> uh, Gold Train oh. has... Halo live action series has been canceled at Paramount Plus, and producers are looking to develop season three at a different streamer. You, you say, "Oh, is this?" I was really con- I was confused because a I just thought you were talking about the game, and then I was like, I already forgot about this news because I again I love Halo. I actually even watched the show for multiple reasons, so obviously I didn't help. But yeah, I didn't even watch the show. I know there was a lot of controversy about it, and I don't know. Even if I, I don't. Halo, I don't know if you know even the history of, like, how much crap went on with, like, trying to make Halo a movie oh, and a TV dude. show. Steven it's Spielberg big... was on it. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, I think Peter Jackson at one point. It was ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much they've tried to make this. Um, and they're still talking about, like, maybe they'll find someone else. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, maybe... I really Go ahead. like Halo, but I'm just, like, confused what about it is like so i i get the cgi probably that's the thing that's really stopping them like uh, just how expensive it would be oh um, like i don't think the plot is that hard to get <laughs> personally it's a pretty simple story in my opinion a fun story a really good one but simple well for this well two things for this specifically i think paramount just got sold right so that's probably why it, it's also getting canceled like screw this uh, I think they're in the so, middle of the process. Well, the yeah, it's like some I and because I know it was, the joke was Sony was gonna be by Paramount and it was gonna be Sony in charge of the show, but oh, yeah. So I I'm kind of controversial. Like I don't I know people love Halo's plot. I like it, but I'm like I don't know if it's like the thing that's like good for a story, like a TV show. It's like I'm mostly here for how what I'm playing. So I. am that's why, again, I didn't even watch because, like, I don't know if I care that much, but I mean, I don't know how many people care. And then, although it does seem like a pretty big reaction that got canceled already. Well, I, that's the funny thing is all the, um, what's it called? Reactions have been finally good news for the Halo fan base. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they did not like that show at all, which I mean, everything I saw in the show, I just watched like people review the show, so I'm not going to act like I have a clear mm-hmm. opinion on it, but. It, they went very off the record where it's like i know yeah it's halo like i master chief has a gun and he kills aliens like i don't think it's that crazy of a story like, <laughs> if you really want to nail the plot line of halo I, I get there's a lot of lore a lot of extended universe mm-hmm. stuff that you can really dig deep into but i'm also like is that what the majority of the fan base is like no. fiending for or do they just want to mm-hmm. see master chief kill aliens yeah i think you're right they went a little too far and like yeah, because I only seen some stuff, and all the stuff I've seen is like, you know, like different characters that like just random characters who I've never heard of. So obviously they're probably new. It's a bunch of stuff where I'm like, it just seems like it was too much to find the show. It probably could have just been more simple, but 
So let's see. Some people like maybe they'll just, you know, not even, you know, like just reboot it or, you know, just do something completely new. And I'm like, we'll see. Because again, they've had so much trouble even making this show. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't really care too much. I don't, I don't know how much you've been watching these gaming shows. I still haven't seen Fallout, which is probably the one I'll see, but like they don't do too much for me. I, I'm the same in an extent. It, I kind of only watch it if it's a franchise I care about. Like, I did yeah. watch Fallout, and I loved Fallout. Like, that show was awesome. I think you'd be mm-hmm. into it. But, like, I'm not a Twisted Metal guy, so I didn't watch that. I don't really oh. care that much for Last of Us, so I didn't watch that. So it's like, I don't know. It's like all the franchises that, like, the, the TV series and movies have been done for, I don't care that much for the franchise. I did watch the Uncharted movie. And you know yeah. what? Controversial opinion? Pretty good. I, yeah. I liked it. <laughs> I think the stuff like Fallout was easy because it's like it can be in that universe, but it doesn't just have to be the same retelling of the game. So oh, yeah. stuff like that I would like. And again, which is what they did here. It's just no one cared for it. the actual just, story. Yeah, it's just the story itself wasn't very interesting. Yeah. It, it, do you think it's very much a thing of like the importance of doing instead of like a straight adaptation, like, hey, you were just adapting Halo 1. Do you think it was a good idea for them to just go try a different thing? It just didn't work out because they didn't understand the source material. Like, what what, what um, would you have changed about the Halo show in that regard? I know it's hard for me to tell because I I'm usually one who's like I don't really care the scene of the same story just on TV. That's kind of why I didn't even really watch The Last of Us, even though I know people love it. At least, and I think for plenty of people, they're like, that's fine. I'll take you know, like the same story, maybe a little more new stuff in it, like I know what they do with The Last of Us, but for me, I would prefer not the retelling. But, I mean, Halo 1, in some ways, I'm like, I don't think that story is enough to carry on, because, you know, like, there's not, I don't know how many cutscenes in the game, it's obviously not a cutscene-heavy game, or even a series, so I'm like, I feel like it's not too much, but uh, I don't, uh, that's why I'm like, would you do would you be able to do one season? I don't know. Could you fill it out more? It's just so hard to tell with Halo, which, again, smaller people than us have tried to make these shows and not really had much success, so maybe there is something here. It's like, eh, we'll go with a different series. I think Gears of War, which I think they are going to do, is like much better than Halo set for this stuff. Let me ask you a question, Beef, and I because you're a big Halo fan, I really want to yeah. know your take on this. Do you think that Halo IP is still relevant today, like at least to the modern audience, or has there just been enough like bad will towards the IP that people are kind of like Master Chief doesn't mean as much as he used to, or is that just an overreaction? Is it, he still I that guy? I don't know. It's hard to tell because I mean I've stuck with it fine. I'll still play Halo Infinite every once in a while, but obviously, like you said, like a lot of it's like on the downward trend, but I mean, I would have said that almost before Halo Infinite, and there was still, like, a pretty good pop-off for it when it, like, at least when it launched, like, it's still re- it's still reviewed pretty well. I remember winning, like, the Player's Choice at the Game Awards, and Game had a pretty good concurrence. So it's like, you say that, but it's like, I feel like any time they come, I think it's un- in one of those franchises where, like, no matter how, like, down it gets those people like maybe this time maybe this time we just have to believe so we'll yeah. s- but we'll see i mean i know what you mean though like it's gonna be hard especially now it's like how long until they get the next one and i don't know it's not like there's much they can do in the meantime to kind of keep it going or bring up goodwill so yeah i mean like i thought fall- fall- Oh, sorry, sorry. Did you know anything? No, I didn't have much. I think that's about it. I'm like, I just just don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, like, Fallout 76 was such a massive disaster, but, like, Mm -hmm. people still watch the Fallout show. People still, like, that was massive. The Fallout fan base is still there. So I think that's kind of the thing with Halo, where, you know, you get a few bad games in, for sure. Those are marks on the reputation, and people are going to be very skeptical, like, even more so than usual of 343 when it comes to whatever the next Halo game is, because I don't think they're going to get moved off Halo. That's just... No. That's their whole purpose, is to make Halo games. I think at this point, they kind of have to realize, like, you would have to think they realize, like, okay, we actually do need to nail it. And if whoever... The guy who is, um, kind of the cleanup squad for Master Chief Collection... Yeah, I forget his name, too. 
I know he was Pierre, I think it is. Okay, I was but gonna like, say Peter, but I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> Peter. Uh but no, Pierre, like everyone seems to like him and what he mm-hmm. was able to do for Master Chief Collection and Infinite. Just have him direct the next Halo game. Maybe he can actually like nail down what it what people want from this franchise. I know. So yeah, we'll see. If, but like, yeah, because I'm thinking like other franchises like Mass Effect had, you know, a bad game. It's gonna be 10 years before we get the next one, but I still think people are gonna be pretty hyped for it. I think some franchises, like, especially, like, if you've had, like, such good games, you're kind of always gonna get a little benefit of the doubt. Especially, and most of that's probably just gonna be, like, what they show when they do finally come back. But, that's so... I think as some... At least right now, not much relevance, but I still think, no matter what, like, if they, tr- like, as long as they bring something and, like, say the right things and it doesn't immediately look put people off i think they'll have at least enough interest agreed uh moving into one of our last stories so we got two more uh esports college football we got some player numbers and these are fucking insane okami games has this over 2.2 million people played ea college football 25 during its three-day early access period this required purchasing the $100 edition of the game. EA also confirmed an additional 600k people played via the EA Play trial. So mm-hmm. so that means 2.2 million people bought a $100 edition of this game. Yeah. And that's the the game ha- just launched today. Mm-hmm. This thing's fucking massive. <laughs> yeah, in a way I, I was think... not expecting. So I think we've used Matt Piscatello like his stuff on the this podcast before because he's you know the big u.s yeah. guy i think he was also like hinting like i think this can be big but the whole time he's like but how big because he was kind of i think other people like tell him like oh it because like it could get pretty ridiculous and it's still another like, yeah it's going to be ridiculous um and i get it because i played the last i played the last two games i have ncaa 14 which weirdly enough, is, like, one of the most, like, expensive used games was on the market. I mean, maybe it go down now, but people would pay, like, hundreds for that. So, I could definitely tell. It was pent up, and people oh were gosh. really looking forward to this one. Yeah, I'm looking at the price now. Complete in box for a 360 copy is $45. <laughs> Which is, yeah. for a football game? <laughs> I want people to understand, for a football game, those are literally worth yeah, people- scrap, so... Yeah, because yeah, it was always one like you know like I've definitely felt in like recent years like oh I should try and emulate it with the PS3 emulator. It's not very good to do. It's like oh do I dig out the 360? I'm too lazy for that. So I kind of get what people are at, and I think also like I don't know how much you've been following, but Bob and Fusion point out too. It's like they shown you know a lot before leading up to this, and everything has like just been like. It's so weird compared to all of the football, not other football, other sports games. Where everyone's like, "God, this looks like crap" or whatever. All the fans are like, "Oh, this is what we want. This is, I'm excited for this." Like, it was so much hype for a sports game. So it's definitely in a different category than a normal sports game. In April of 2020, it was going for 145 dollars. Yeah, that's why I think I was looking at yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, because um, what yeah. I, would I mean? Would you? I mean, I had copy. I would even at that price. I'm like, I'm not selling this. I'm not, like, it's impossible. It's so hard to play otherwise. I like, mean, the and, idea was that it was never going to get a sequel. It's not on yeah. PC, correct? Um, I don't even think this one is on PC. That's right. Which is another thing is this thing is apparently moving consoles like no other. Is what's a, that, that, at least that's what it I looks would, like. I wanted to bring that up. I mean, is this going to be the big? turnaround moment for the next gen consoles where people are actually going to start adopting like ps5 series x series s granted ps5 has been selling like more Mm -hmm. than good enough like they've been outpacing the ps4 still i think to this point uh to this day but like is this going to be like a oh everyone has a ps5 and a series x now kind of like how around this time it was like everyone had a ps4 and xbox one yeah i think so because i'm really trying to think what's like the big third party game like I th- you know that you sh- you want the first parties to do it, but I think something like this, like obviously it's a sports game. I think this this is like one of the first really like in that weird tier of like mass market games that has gone third party that has gone um 
like next gen only, I think. Like I, you think about it, like yeah, who'd want to play Elden Ring on the uh, Xbox One or PS4? But it's on there. You can do it. So it's like pretty rare that this one, like yeah, they said no. It's going to that one. I'm kind of shocked EA let them do that, but it seems like it worked out. And I'm sure Xbox and uh, PlayStation are like impre- like kind of happy because yeah, I think people. I've heard from plenty of people who are like yeah, I'm going to go buy this thing. I need to play this game. Interesting. You know, it, it's definitely one of those games that I think is much bigger than a lot of people were actually predicting it to be. Yeah. People are predicting it to be a big deal, too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, is this going to be. Oh, sorry, good. I was going to say, I mean, some of that might be obviously, we're talking mostly US is like where this is at. So I kind of get it if you're like, if you're in, you know, Europe, you're like, why? I've never heard of even NCAA. Why would, does anyone care? But it's like, oh, yeah. I, so maybe there's some of that, like in a more global. But no, in the U.S., this does mean a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, even then, like, football in general is so massive yeah. in the U.S. And, like, you know, and Madden games still sell as well as they do, even though people are very mad about recently yeah. <laughs> Madden games. So, yeah, I mean, do you think this is just going to be part of the lineup moving forward for uh, football games or sports games for EA Sports? I, I, I think I remember them confirming, like, yeah, this will yeah. be, like, a yearly release moving forward. I believe so. So this is definitely going to be, obviously, the biggest one to pop off. Which, I mean, also, I think, because they even took, I think, an extra year to do this. I think the deal, I mean, they could have got one out last year, but they didn't. So, yeah, I think it's just going to be yearly. And, you know, yeah, that's, as, that's a lot as, that they took a year, honestly. I know. I, they should be doing that for Matt. <laughs> I think they really were like, they were like, I mean, I I wish, I'm sure. it's all, It seems so complex. Like, I wish most sports games did take, you know, two mm-hmm. years, especially at this point. To really change things up, but it's like, you know, you're not gonna. How much more money are we gonna make? Are we gonna make twice as much money if we do, you know, sell it half the time as we do now? No. So it's like, I think they kind of like if we, you know, take at least an extra year this time, we'll really like make fans happy and you know have probably for years to come. Like, be like, yeah, NCAA, that's the sports game you want. Nice. Very happy for the NCAA fans, especially. Uh, yeah, Bob. I actually, very I was saying, I'm in that. I still haven't checked it out, but I do have the 10 hour trial and I talk with my friends about it. So, yeah, I'll still That's check fine. it out. I'm sure like we'll one day bore you guys off with telling you how important this game is. <laughs> no, I get it. Listen, I, I spent enough time with uh, Fusion and Bob to understand why this mm-hmm. is such a major deal. Even if I'm not like personally a college football fan, I get why like. Okay, it's been it's been over a decade since the last one. Yeah, I think that's like the biggest thing is why people get it's been a decade and even those ones were pretty good. So it is Mm -hmm. like a big thing. Very excited to see where that goes. Uh, Moving into the next one. Actually, really fast question. How long do college football seasons last? Because I assume this would sell the most during the college football season. Um. I'm trying to think, is the championship in, I believe the championship is in January, and so it's it's, it's kind of like, you know, like a first, you're in college now, a semester of school, so I think it goes from August, or maybe beginning of September to January, so it's a little shorter than, you know, like a football season, but yeah, that's probably the other thing, is they launch this a little early, but like next month, once NCAA football starts, college kids come back, it's probably going to get another like this thing is probably gonna have pretty good legs too. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, just a uh, just random question I was interested yeah. in. Um, last story, the Yakuza series. Next one yeah. is going to get a new game. <laughs> you know, sky is blue. <laughs> uh, Warren sixty four <laughs> tweeted this: the next game from Like a Dragon Studio, Ryugaga. I can never say the name. Ryugaga. I, I can't either. Will be revealed at Tokyo Game Show in September. <laughs> we just got infinite wealth in january yep. so i i mean listen what, what do you think this is a spinoff mainline like what what is the next step for this yakuza franchise yeah they we said talk. they said yeah. sorry real quick they did say this is something you would not expect so i'm interested in what that means <laughs> yes and i think that's really what's been throwing it off because it's like some people like oh they do a third judgment or uh, i mean they have a lot of options it's just that like there's always a reason, like, would they do that? It's, like, another, like, smaller, like, a dragon game. Like, the 
one like you know like the one i forget what it's called um guide like gaiden basically Gaiden's, yeah, yeah so i'm like is it that is it a remake some people like what they remastered three will they just remake it like three kawami so i'm ve- i'm kind of interested to see where this goes because i would bet on a judgment game but them saying we're not expecting it i'm like i maybe it's something like kind of like that like a ch- i'm just guessing it has to be a spin-off basically at this point i mean yeah i I'm leaning either towards a Kiwami 3 or another option is probably... <laughs> okay, this is going to sound insane. Do you remember the zombie game on the PS3? Oh, God. Bring it up. What yes, if they I did do. It Ishid, what if they bring it Ishid and bring it to the States? You know, I know, because I was looking at that I know that scene. one sucks. <laughs> I know. I, I was looking at it because I was seeing like, what? I was like, I know. I thought there was more than that. That's like the only other one that's not been... But like been remade or bought stateside i'm like there's no way they're gonna actually do that i i feel like they want to forget about it <laughs> i know because i'm like unless they made it like really like it would almost have to be a sequel and be like super over the top probably like they do now like almost a joke like kind of make it like dead rising kind of like i don't know if it would just be a strip remake Although I've heard plenty of people be like, I'm like, I would probably play that. I mean, if it was on like, it was cheap or something, I'd play that. I haven't played Ishin because I tried it and I was just like, eh, this, I tried that demo. I was like, eh, this isn't for me. I played that though before Ishin. So apparently it's also like going five hours long. So I oh, highly yeah. doubt it. But if that's the announcement, I mean, I mean, hey, how, it's not something we wouldn't expect. <laughs> and how, how can you be that upset? Because it's like you just got a bunch of games like in the last few years. They are super quick. Another one's going to come soon. So it's like maybe, but we'll see. I doubt it. Yeah, this is one of those things where like it's so hard to predict because the Yakuza series is so mm-hmm. unpredictable. They can kind of just do whatever the hell they want and, you know, we'll eat it up. We'll, we'll eat it up because it's just good shit. It's really high quality games. I kind of think Judgment is a very big possibility, but also, like, didn't wasn't there a lot of controversy with, like, the actor they, and how they couldn't I know. get him? But then I think they did, because that was, like, why it was on PC. Then it did get put on PC, so I'm like, is that fine now? I don't know what's yeah. happening. I haven't even played those, so it's like, that wouldn't do much for me, but... So, yeah, I feel like yeah. the fact that they kind of tease this means it's probably gonna be like something we aren't gonna predict it's probably not you know like judgment or kawami but maybe focus game on (laughs) oh did you see my joke in the discord i want like who's a negative one it's like even younger (laughs) and then some but bully i was like okay honestly like if it was like a very you know not exactly that but like a kind of a twist like that i was thinking even something like a majima game I would honestly, any like a game that's like bully would be my dream. Yeah, <laughs> like, like you know, like a different, even a different kind of take on like the open world. Be it, anything I would any, if it was a spinoff of like Majima or even a different character, I probably I'd be up for that. Actually, I'd have no problem with that. I just don't know if they would like want to do that because again, mm-hmm. they did just did Garden, they just did Infinite Wealth. It's like. Do they really want to do something with the Like a Dragon name slapped on it? That's kind of mainline. Exactly, yeah. There's just so much Yakuza games at this point where I'm like, I, I feel like the burnout might start setting in for a lot of people. I actually asked a couple of uh, people over in the Game Mess Discord a while back, where it's like, do you guys think there's like a burnout? Like, do you feel the burnout how they're releasing three Yakuza games in the span of a mm-hmm. year? And they're like, no, we'll keep them coming. Because they were because their viewpoint was like, there's such different games, they're different styles mm-hmm. of games where you have the JRPG like Infinite Wealth, you have like the more like in between smaller game with Gaiden, and then Ishin is kind of the historical one. It's like there's different settings, different styles. So maybe that's what could avoid burnout. I also think that was just a weird scenario where like they were able to release three in under a year. I know, yeah, I don't I don't think one. I don't think that's gonna happen moving forward. Yeah, because like one was a remake. Well, one was we make Gaiden was like originally gonna be like a DLC, I think, and they just made it bigger. Yeah, 
Because I'm not like burnt out. I still like these games. I just finished Infinite Wealth this week, and prob- besides Persona 3 Reload, it's probably my favorite game this year. And so it's like the it's it's number one for the original games. It's like I'm not burnt out, but also I only play these like once a year, and I'm already behind. Like I haven't played five and six or Gaiden, so I want to get to those. So if you keep coming, I'm never gonna finish or catch up. And like it seems like they might run into the problem they had when they were trying to release five and six is like people can't like we're not gonna get new fans with these, and then they had to go yeah. With, zero and reboot with like a dragon so it's like eventually i'm like i think there's like some worry and that's why i think it's good that they did say well we'll then do judgment too like so it's like okay you also have those so it's not you're only getting you know more like a dragon every year and gotta keep up with us of course yeah yeah i mean like like a dragon that was the one that got me in because like, oh, i, I know tried- I tried the other ones. I wasn't into the beat 'em up gameplay. This is mm-hmm. a personal thing. I understand it's high quality, but like I tried like a dragon where it was the more turn based, and I loved it. It's like this is how this is how I'm in. I'm into the yeah. series now. I didn't play Ishin or Gaiden though because of the beat 'em up combat. I mean, mm-hmm. do you think that might be a deterrent for some people, or is like is that just like uh-huh. such a small subsection of people where it's like I think we'll be fine. We can keep going with like having beat them up and turn base you know not commit fully to either one i know it's hard to tell because like, they don't exactly i think do numbers but it seems like almost weirdly enough that you know now that they've gone turn base it's more popular like i obviously god it was a smaller game but it seems like infinite wealth and uh like a dragon sold better so it seems like to most people like that is what they want is like you know, just the turn-based combat, and which is so weird to think about, but yeah. I think they now, like, hit on that, though, kind of more focus on that, and that's where, like, because I think Judgment also has the beat em up style combat. I think that's where they're, like, they're still trying to, like, service that to people, but the, like, for the big games, I think it's most going to be, like, Infinite Wealth, which I think works. I think Infinite Wealth, like, they made, they added a little more stuff. I think they just keep making their, um, turn-based combat even better it's so much fun to play and took me 100 hours but i like didn't get bored of the combat ever so it's like yeah i think they've hit on something with it agreed well moving into our topic aka the reviews of the week before that beef i never asked you what are your top three most anticipated games for the rest of the year because i'd asked Bob last week and i'm interested to hear what your opinion is that's a good question uh definitely astro Astro's coming out. That's my guy. I think I can do one for each console. I, I, I'm sp- I'm so weird on the Zelda game. What's like, I think it's going to be really because I wanted a game featuring Zelda. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, I'm, I I still like because you know I like that Link's Awakening on so on it. I know some people don't. I like it, but I love it, man. I'm just I think cause, well because I'll talk to you. You're like interested in it because you think it's a little more puzzly. That's my thing, where, like, the puzzle aspect of it is, like, it, let's be real, no one plays Zelda for the combat, I know. per se, <laughs> so, like, I think the puzzly aspect, kind of building the whole game around that just sounds so interesting to me, and it gets my brain turning of, like, all the different ideas they could do, and, like, the idea of, like, just being a summoner class in a game, of just, like, summoning a bunch of monsters to do your business for you, I feel like they're gonna have so much fun with that. I know, because, yeah, like, that's why I'm, like, if it goes well, because it looks cute in the way that, like, kind of described me. It's like, oh, this can be so much fun. I'm like, I'm just, I've, I'm a little worried that it's not going to hit for me. But if it hits, you know, like, I'll definitely take that. I'm going to be excited for that a lot. And I don't know what all that. And like I said, I'm like, because I play a lot of Game Pass games. So I'm like, I'm in the this weird, like, swore of, I think I'll be pretty happy with, like, Avowed or Indiana Jones. But it's like. I just, I'm just, I think most of it's they still haven't given us a release date. And I think once, but I think I'll be pretty happy with those come out. So I think, and I think between the two, again, I think you're the same way. It's like, I really do like machine games. So it's like, I'm really looking forward to that. But it's, I, I love machine games, but I just can't get excited for this uh, Indiana Jones. Well, I know you don't care as much for Harry Potter. So, oh, do you like Indiana Jones? 
Oh, not Harry Potter. Why did I say that? Indiana Jones. Oh. Yeah, I do, which I think also helps, is that I do okay. like Indiana Jones. So I think that's when I'm also looking through the list, seeing like what else is coming out. I'd say Silk Song if I had any actual hope anymore, but after E3, I think I'm just like, it's not, it doesn't exist, so. Yeah, I don't think it ever existed. (laughs) I I swear, and now I'm like, but I swear it does exist. It's just, what happened? This is one of those games where it's like, why is it just three people? So we like, there's no information about this damn game. Yeah, I look through the list. I think I'll, so yeah, I'll go again. I'll, so yeah, I'll go like India Jones, Astro, and uh, Zelda, I guess. And nothing, nope. so unfortunately, no interesting indie games. Most of those, I think, already came out for me. Buggy Squire looks good, but like... Oh, yeah. Again, I need like some... I'll give me a joke. I'm... It does help when a game gets, especially with indies, it's so hard to trust when they just keep saying, especially yep. at this time, 2024, it's like, That's I want to believe you, but, you know, like, it's hard to, like, say, like, exactly. But that one does. Like, I have not seen that new trailer. I need to watch that, cause, but I'm still interested in the game. But, uh, Concord, aren't you excited for that? <laughs> Did you? Did you play it? Yeah, you did. You yeah, went to play yeah, Overwatch. I, <laughs> no, I, I was so bored with it. I went to play, I put, started getting back into Overwatch. I, I'm shocked it was able to be that boring that I played Overwatch. It, it's not a bad game. I think it's fun. I know enough, but like, it is so slow. It is such a slow game, and the way you mm-hmm. move, the way like everyone like, the way the map converges, the maps are so big that the slow movement speed doesn't really accommodate it. If they just boosted the speed like to 30%, 40%, something like that, kind of like what you know, what reminds me of you remember with Mario 3D World uh, plus Bowser's Fury, they did that big uh, thing where they were like, Oh, we increased the movement speed. I did mm-hmm. not really like 3D World on Wii U, loved it on Switch. That movement speed alone was what did mm-hmm. it for me, so I. I think a lot of developers underestimate how important like the speed of movement is in a game. And I I just think if they just increased it just a bit, I think it could be much bigger than it is right now, which is the all-time peak for the all- open beta is 2,363. I know. And that's the free beta. I was going to say, so I couldn't play the close because I do not have PS Plus right now. I could check out the open. Maybe I will. It's also, I mean, I was, it's also enough about because I've never played well, I've, yeah, I never played Destiny 2's PvP, or I haven't played Overwatch that much, so it's like, is this the one? Yeah, I th- I mean, I've seen multiplayer games like this. I think people talk about them a lot, like, I think Lawbreakers is the easy one where people are like, it's good, but the problem is, there's better, and why would I play this when I want to play better games, or, like, more popular that always getting updated, so... It's just yeah, not that interesting. There's nothing feel... about the game that's attracting people i know and i feel really bad because it's like at this point i know people at dunk out but at this point it just looks like even if it like it's not it's good even if i give reviews a little more favorably than it looks like it just looks like no one's interested in it and i just at that point i just almost feel bad for the devs it's like if it, it comes out and yeah there's like only a couple thousand people playing at the launch i'm like uh that feels almost bad especially if it's like there's nothing wrong it's just you know, it's just not anything more than good. So we'll see. I uh, will see. Uh, but yeah, it's not looking too good, unfortunately. Oh, great. Um, moving into the reviews of the week, uh, we got three. There's there's actually a good amount of rev- um, releases this week. Konitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess, the mm-hmm. game that Bench was very against. I don't know why. I, he says, oh, they never it never looked good. And it's it like, looks... I, I, yeah. it, they were never, I, I will say, I agree that they never really showed it in the best mm-hmm. way because I never understood what the gameplay was. But we've, mm-hmm. the, and now I'm watching gameplay, it's like, this actually looks fun. <laughs> oh, did I talk about it here? I played the demo. I really liked that demo. I thought the demo oh, really? was pretty good. And yeah, I'm no, probably, I just, right here. and I'm probably going to play it, like, just because, you know, like, well, once I get the time, right now I'm a little busy, but maybe in a few mm-hmm. weeks I'm probably going to play because it doesn't look too long. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I kind of get why. Like, it's almost a hard sell because it's like, it's like you describe it as tower defense, but I think other people are like, you're not like really just kind of saying so. It's like you're like trying to protect your goddess and 
there's some strategy elements where you're placing your villages and then you're like doing hack and slash combat. So no, it's pretty good. Like this is kind of like specky, you know, like in eighty one. I and I think that's good for it. And I think it's gonna do okay, even though it's kind of busy right now. So that's about what I expected. The funny thing is, I think people just like people like us can't trust some of Capcom game. I'm like that. W- I think that's just because Exo Primal came out. But no, this one's like, oh, hey, one that's just solid. So I'll mm-hmm. check it out and maybe be able to report back once I play it. Oh, we need you to report back immediately. Uh, I'll please. play it soon. I actually might start this weekend only because I'm going home, so I might. You'll yell at me if. I only have a disc of Elden Ring, so if I'm just using my Series S, maybe I'll just play this, but we'll see. So maybe that'll help, but maybe I'll not be able to resist finishing up Elden Ring. Oh, we'll talk about Elden Ring later, don't yep. you worry. Uh, but it did, real quick, for the reviews, 81 on Open Critic. Uh, IGN gave it an 8. Uh, uh, IGN Italy gave it an 8. I hate that. I hate how inconsistent Open Critic is with like the to- the reviews that they show because it's like where's GameSpot here? <laughs> you I don't, know, like yeah, I don't, I never, I don't know. Also, why they do? I usually just do, you know, like I'll sort of buy newest or whatever because I don't know what the heck they mean by like featured. Like who's Hobby Consolas? <laughs> no idea. Uh, anyways, um, moving into our next game, Nintendo World Champions at Championships NES Edition, sitting at a seventy-two on Open Critic. So a bit lower, kind of middling reviews. Uh, some a lot of sevens from GameSpot and some eights. One nine. So someone really liked it. Uh, Jeff Grubb, someone that we're both familiar with, was very yeah. upset about this game's lack of leaderboards. Beef, I know you like to chase those high scores. Mm-hmm. Does that bother you too? Is that stopping you from wanting to play it? I don't think I was gonna get it, but I I think it sounds like people like. What is up with you guys? You're a freak. And, but I'm with Jeff. I totally understand why that's like almost like game breaking. Like, because I mean, you thought, I'm sure other people have thought like him or other people. It's like, that's a big thing to pl- do like in a game, like show yourself climbing the leaderboard. And, like, especially if you're very good. Like, that's the same thing with speedrun is like, you want to show like, oh, I'm getting better. Look at this insane thing I'm doing. Like, as, which is a little hard in NES games because you can't, like, just break them, but it is kind of a big thing, like, so I kind of get why people have issues, because now it's essentially, like, a, it's essentially just, like, you play, what, by yourself, or maybe with a few friends who also want to play NES games, and you're just playing parts, you know, I'm playing NES games, you're playing just small parts of them, it's like, so I get it, it's just a, it is one of those, where it's like, it's, how hard is it to implement? It's such a weird Nintendo decision. It's a very weird Nintendo decision. I I think I'm at this point where I'm just getting so sick of NES games. <laughs> I like, know. Me too. I, I like some NES games, but like it's far from my favorite Nintendo console. Mm-hmm. If this was any like N64 World Championship edition, or even SNES World Championship, bro, I'd be jumping at the bit. Like, especially N64, because you get games like Mario 64, Banjo, uh, ocarina of time games that are actual like really big speed run games those would be a blast to try to get the like score for like just go through the story mode all that i think that would be an absolute fun time but like it's at this point where it's like we got nes remix one nes remix two nes world champions it's like you guys have like 12 other consoles (laughs) yeah i don't know why you're just so fixated like yes the nes is great but like we're at this point now where even the people who have that NES nostalgia that remember playing the NES as a kid are starting to get sick of it. What do you think the like 20 year old person who only really uses their switch for Mario party and smash, do you think they're going to get much for it? And yeah, you could say, Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, it's for the the different audience. It's for the boomer audience, but it's like the boomer audience is getting tired of it. So it's like, try the other like generations of Nintendo fans. The ones who grew up with 64 or GameCube or Wii. A Wii World? Oh my god, are you kidding me? That'd be an absolute banger. It, it, and also, the fact is, this is missing so many games. Where's Punch-Out? <laughs> the mm-hmm. fact that Punch-Out isn't even on here is absolutely criminal to me, where it's like, that's the one NES game I really love, but they just don't have it, and they don't have the Mega Mans or Castlevanias, which, yeah, third party, but still, like, I don't know. It's just frustrating. Like, there's so much more they could have done with this. It feels so bare-bones. Yeah. Yeah, so not much interest from us, it looks like. 
Yeah, pretty much. I think that's an easy skip for me. Maybe if it's on clearance, I get it for like 15, 20 bucks, but you know, Nintendo games. <laughs> uh, and then our last one is Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. This was the big Game Pass game for July. Uh, they, a game that they outright stated as a Souls like, a 70 on Open Critic. Uh, yep. Even lower than NES World Champions. It was actually sitting at a 69 uh, earlier. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, IGN gave it a 7. IGN Spain, IGN Italy are the ones that get it, <laughs> but not GameSpot. I, again, Open Critic is weird. <laughs> but 7, 6, 3.5, 60 out of 100. A lot of like kind of just, eh, it's good, but like yeah. it doesn't do anything special. I, Beef, how do you feel about it? Do you, are you starting to like. When do you think we're going to have, like, a Dark Souls 1 moment for another person doing a Souls-like? Because, like, Lies of P and Stellar Blade were both awesome games. They still sit at an 80. Those are both games that are sitting at, like, an 80. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's because the FromSoft logo is on. It's biased. But it's like, I do actually agree with those reviews. Yeah, we play them. Yeah, Lies of P. I loved Lies of P. That's an 8 out of 10 game. Like, it's still, Mm. like far from what FromSoft is able to do. And I kind of thought about it more and more. It's like, it really does feel like a... There was this time when, like, no one else was able to do 2D platforming as good as Mario. I think we're at this point where, like, you know, they created... FromSoft created the Souls-like genre, and they're the ones who know how to do the Souls-like genre because they were Mm -hmm. the creators. They've been doing this for over a decade. And we're waiting for, like, the other companies to show, hey, we can do Souls-like just as good as FromSoft. And we're just... We're close. I think we're really close. <laughs> yeah. We keep getting middling ones here and there, like yeah. luck. Did I tell you? Um, so I know I know the people. I was watching Mike Minotti. Yeah, like from Giant Bomb play uh, Dark Souls one for his first time. Man, like just seeing it. Like and I'm it's playing so Elden Ring. Incredible. I'm like, I want to go back. I want to play. Yeah. I was like, I remember all this. I man, it's making me want to play it so it's much. Such a, it's such a special game. Dark Souls. I know. Fun. It's like once a lifetime game experience I, like, it's it's always like up there I'm like one of my top three games i'm like man i really like just every like how well i it's so like messed up like it's this massive game at least it feels like it's like i could tell you everywhere to like i can mm-hmm. just direct him so well it's so messed up it, but i'm the same like i could probably play through that game in my head right now yeah. <laughs> and it's like i played it like twice and that that's why i'm like that's something i just don't feel with the others it's so, but speaking of Lies P, I weirdly do feel like that's kind of as cl- that's f- from the first time. That's pretty close. Oh. Like it was oh, yeah. pretty good. Like it's weird. Like you know, I know Lords of the Fallen, Atlas. They are, I think, Atlas Fallen. At there was another game like it that came out last year. A lot of them get like in the seventies. So actually, even Lies of P was like getting low eighties was pretty impressive. So. I know they're going to make another. It looks like they're going to make more. So I have some hope they'll get it. But man, I think someone would have to get it's. But I think people are playing like, you know, like they've been doing the kind of souls like formula even before Demon Souls. Like their older games like will kind of have like some DNA. So I think it's just so hard to like look at that and say, how can we like if you're another studio, especially indie, it's like having to say to yourself how can we do it better than from soft or even mm-hmm. get near there to make ours interesting i think it's almost too hard to do i mean yeah that, that again though that's what developers said when mario was just better than everything like in the 3d yeah. platform space but then we eventually saw like people started to do better than mario they were on that level i think it will happen eventually but like it, a fascinating thing to think about like dark souls one that interconnected world no one else has done it. Not even from Sun. They stopped. I know. That's why. <laughs> Dark, so fascinating. That's that's why people like think I'm crazy for still saying I still think Dark Souls one might be the gold standard. But like watching people play, like how many ways like you can go back to filing shrine, like how many you just God. keep opening paths, and they had to do that. There's no fast travel for the first half of the game. Like it's it was a bit like. And I don't even think Mike has complained about that. That's how you know, like, how good it is. It's like, I can't fast travel. It's like, yeah, but do you need to? Like, that's almost kind of building something is you just, there's this good sense of direction. So I think, yeah, like, that is something they, I I feel like maybe, I don't know if people complained about the time, but it's like, you know, they went, away, and I get why they went away, but it almost is like, it's, it's a, no, you think 
about it. It's annoying, but it does kind of like it's important. There's a reason why it wasn't there. I mean, Miyazaki has outright stated it's like, hey, we'd love to do an interconnected world, but it's kind of the reason why I one felt rushed because like, I look know. at Lost Isolith, look at like kind of that second half of the game where a lot of the areas felt unfinished. And I kind of love the unfinishedness. Like that's how much of a freak I am for this franchise where I'm like, mm-hmm. mm, it's kind of funny how bad yeah. Lost Isolith it, is. Though. It <laughs> like, feel, <let's> real. <laughs> you can tell like, because it, what's that? Uh, it's something I like. I love plenty of games that people are like, yeah, but there's issues. But I'm like, yeah, but the issues are because like they were trying something like it's the mm-hmm. same thing with Persona 3. It's like, it's why it's my favorite. It's like, yeah, those issues. I agree. But it's like, they were this is the first time making like the daily life simulator and social links so it's like yeah there's rough stuff but it's kind of so like raw and interesting it's something you've never seen before it it, add, it does add to it so i so yeah like sometimes i'm like you know what? i'll take the i get why the sequel is same dark souls episode it's like you clean it up but sometimes i'm like mm, you don't think about it until later on like oh, maybe i did want it a little buffer yeah, I honestly think like I I would love to see more companies get to that lies of P level and mm-hmm. you know, exceed it. I think it's very possible to exceed. It it's just um it's it's a difficult genre to get right, I think. I like, know. You have to balance it so meticulously. You have to design these areas so that anyone can go through, but also like it's still a challenge that like you know, not telling people what to do, but also trying to direct them. Something that's been going on since the 80s, and a lot of developers still struggle being able to do that. It's a very difficult like skill set. And I want to see more companies jump into the ring and really put their hands and like minds into trying to nail it. Do you think... I, I think a lot of people... Have you reached a souls like burnout where you're like, okay, th- we're getting a little crazy? How like every presentation, especially if you're watching like a Keeley show, there's like twelve souls likes. Do you think that's a little much, or is this just the evolution of kind of like the action genre? Like this is how action games are going to be moving forward, outside of like a rare exceptions. But like action games are very much just souls likes now. I mean, I definitely had that burnout. We'll talk about. I'm sure we'll talk about like how. Um... I just went back to Elden Ring, obviously, for the DLC. I don't know, because, like, you know, I haven't even played a lot of third-party ones, because they come, like I said, they come out in these, like, 70s, so yeah. I mostly do skip them unless it's, like, a live P, but I'm also, I I get why developers do them, but I'm, because they're popular, but I'm also like, man, they seem hot, just so hard. That's why it's almost shocking. But, I... I mean, the alternative is, yeah, like, just like what we used to have, like, just we call them action adventures, and it's, like, kind of even hard to describe what you're doing with, like, because they're always mm-hmm. so weird, so. I don't know. I think I, it's also hard to tell, like, how much do these sell, because some of them, like, Lords of Fallen became a franchise, so I guess they're profitable, but yeah, I don't blame people for, like, kind of getting burnt out, because I mean, we like them, but I don't know how much we play them, and I don't even know how much we represent the normal audience. Yeah, but I, I think they sell enough for these small studios. They s- get yeah. by. I like, think those op- ones are very popular on Twitch. Yeah. That's the big thing. You know, you know what it probably is? It's probably like where we've been knee deep for like 10 years in a Souls game. I'm sure there's plenty of people like just hop on Elden Ring, and then it's like, yep, instead of going backwards, maybe it's like, oh, this game was a lot, is like, kind of left, so it's like, it's probably like that, it's like, new, more people jump into the genre, and then like, they're the ones probably getting into these, who, they're trying to sell, it's those people they're trying to sell to, it's like, hey, you liked Elden Ring, here's another one, at least similar. But yeah, hopefully, Flintlock can do it. it. I do feel a little bad that we basically, for Flintlock, the section was, Ah, oh, well, this is why I you're know. not as good as Dark Souls. <laughs> but like, hey, I, I mean, that's that's a true thing. Like, you're I was, not at that level. You're gonna be. Compared. I thought it. I thought it was gonna get an eighty. Like, again, side yeah. game. I'm a, so I was a little surprised. I mean, I guess I haven't watched it too close, but yeah, I'm so not too much to say about. It, unfortunately, and I just unfo- it also like I said, come out in a busy time because like in these games, you know, and I know they're all like kind of their niche, but it's like. Yeah, you know, I'd rather play Kamitsugami or NCAA football than this, unfortunately. Uh, moving finally into our last thing, what we've been playing. I've just been playing random shit like 
Um, oh, actually, I can't. I do have a game that's like modern that I can talk about because it's like I've mostly just been playing like stuff like Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was in the mood for something like that. But I started playing Zenless Zone Zero. Um, oh. Came out earlier this month, and I gotta say, I think this is pretty handily my favorite of the the Hoyo games, the oh. Hoyo verse, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, remind me which, what, how would you describe this one's gameplay? Because I forget, I think Conkai was the turn-based one, which is this one. Yeah, this is very much the action one. This is the okay. Devil May Cry. I would compare it less to Devil May Cry. I actually think I would compare it more to the older God of Wars. Mm. I think you're doing a lot of button mashing. You're doing more, uh, like some combos. There's obviously some combo attacks that you can pull off. Uh, perfect dodges, whatnot, but like... God of War is probably the best example. Older God of War is not the new mm -hmm. games. Uh, I think it is a ton of fun. It does get a little mashy. I will admit, like you are, there are fights where you're like, yeah, I can just kind of spam away. But also, I was starting to get some fights where it's like, okay, I have to actually kind of think a little bit. You have to switch characters. When you switch characters, that's kind of your perfect dodge. So they'll go for an attack. You see the orange light, you switch, and they kind of get a parry. That's kind of how they do it. You could also just do a perfect dodge and get uh, a get by with that get like fast moving attacks the style in this game is s tier i love the music i love the aesthetic i love just the look of everything it's this really cool futuristic city you know you're fighting like these things called hollows like weird looking monsters love that aesthetic so much just from a style standpoint s plus tier this is easily like my favorite from a style standpoint and the gameplay standpoint because i thought genshin was kind of boring i was just not into the combat there and Hoyover, like uh, um honkai i thought was good but turn based isn't my speed as much as the action genre is and mm -hmm. this is definitely the best in that regard there is a lot of talking in this game beef <laughs> That's surprising, too. You don't there... think... Because I'm primarily mobile. That's a bit surprising. Oh, no, trust me. I, I had this with Genshin and Honkai, too. It's like, man, there's so much talking in these games. <laughs> and, like, it's not bad. Like, the story's fine, but, like, it's kind of that word soup. They just throw out, like, 20 terms at you in the beginning, and you're like, I don't know what any of this means, and you're just winging it. Doesn't do a good job of, like, getting you into the groove but once you get into that groove and you're into you're starting to like understand the story get into it i finished a chapter like the first chapter of the game which was surprisingly pretty long and there was a prologue chapter before but the chapter one and i was like wow that was actually like a pretty good storyline there i was very invested in it i will say i don't know how hard i'm gonna stick with this game mm. i do want to point out i have not really felt the gotcha-ness of the game there is gotcha-ness Trust me, mm -hmm. I see it. <laughs> they they were like, hey, if you want to get some more stuff, you can check out the store. It's like, eh, no, I'm not playing that game. But I think the characters you start off with, like the ones you they give you, they're more than adequate enough. I think they're perfectly suitable. They're pretty fun to play, and I enjoy I enjoy their designs and their looks and everything like that. So I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't mind utilizing these characters, kind of the freebie characters. Um, they do have a new banner coming out on the 24th, and I saw the character for that. I'm like, oh. I do want to get that. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to make sure not to spend money. But uh -huh. if I if you see me in the Discord like, hey guys, you know, you want to judge me, just judge me. Make sure you judge me if I even think about it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall, I, I think it's a blast. I, I I think it's worth trying. It's free. It's a ton of fun. I think it's worth at least giving it a shot, but just be prepared there's a lot of yapping. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't have too much interest. I don't think I've ever downloaded any of them, but Obviously, a lot of people play these games, so I'm not surprised this is another one that people are interested in. If you were to download any of them, I think this is the easy sell, personally. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, but Beef, you've been playing, you actually mentioned Infinite Wealthy Beta. You want to give your final thoughts on that one? I won't say too much, because which is weird, because I said, like, if not count a remake, this is probably my favorite game of the year, but it, it but it's probably, I mean, if, yeah, I would definitely recommend. It's hard to actually recommend, I guess, because you have to play seven, at least number seven first. But it's a it's a long game, I think, and like it's so hard to talk about. Like, but I, it's a long game. It's huge. Like again, you and like this one. Of the surprise things they usually we like you just are in the same area for most Yakuza games. No, they're in Hawaii, and the vibes are like, which I think helps the vibes between that and like the new characters. 
it's a really good game. I've heard some criticisms about the story in general, which I can understand. Like, Yakuza has always had, like, the weird plot where it's like, this is way too complex, there's way too much going on for, like, a game about, you know, well, about crime. But this one, I kind of get those complaints because it's a bit, like, the, the, it's a, the main fact, like, it's kind of about, like, religion in weird ways, but... And it's also weird because it's kind of like the middle one because we know there's going to be a sequel. So there's a lot going on and I have some like issues with it, but I still love it because the characters are great. I love it because combat, the side stuff as always is actually this is probably the best side stuff. I think plenty of people saw the Animal Crossing like uh, well they did, which yeah, I spent 10 hours just doing that. There's like a Pokemon so entire Pokemon side quest. I it's just so weird, like how much stuff they cram in, and you're like, "Yeah, let's do this. This can be fun." So, I basically am getting at like some problems. I some people I know this is their favorite. For me, it's probably a little below, uh, like a dragon, but it's probably top three Yakuza games. So oh, interesting. If you like a dragon, I like like a dragon a lot. I know a lot of oh, people I love don't. That one too. No, I, I love it, but I'm surprised. Like Infinite Wealth feels like it's just an upgrade in every way. I know. I think. It. Again, but some of it to me is like I, I kind of more than I think most people really adore like originality in the game and just meeting Ichiban, like just meeting Ichiban, I think is made like and like meeting Ichiban seeing within the combat. I think that sold me so well. It's like, oh, this is like so new and fresh. It just like like brought it up so hard to me, even though like I would agree, like now it's. I'm sh I think for a lot of people, it's like seeing the characters again, seeing their growth, I mean, new characters. I get yeah, for some people that that's better, but just for me, like some, I really do like a lot of like newness and freshness, and you like just seeing something I don't see. And I really do think Like a Dragon, like was rip, even for being you know a turn based game, which you know is, there's plenty. I think it still felt like a super unique game. It came out like. And when it came out, I, even back then, I was like, I think this is like a big step up for the franchise. And it seemed like it did wonders for them. So that's kind of why I hold that one high, even though it's not like that big of a difference. And then like, I don't know, like Yakuza Zero is probably up there, too, with like both of them. For sure. No, I, 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 I um, that's easily my game of the year as well. So it's going to be interesting how we feel by the end of the year, considering it was a January release. I know, but it. It really does stick with you, like that whole like. End. Yeah. Did you like the ending? Because um, I heard oh, some debate I, about it. I think I won't spoil it too much. I think the weird thing at first, I was like, "What is the problem with the ending?" I did think like they only. Really, I'm surprised these two characters didn't have like a talk at the end. I, if you might be knowing what I'm talking about, I was like, "I'm surprised that like each bond and this other character didn't talk." I mean, he talked with someone, but not this other one. I think it was like I'm fine with the ending, especially. Because, like, oh, it's not going to be long till it continues. But I get what people are, like, saying. And, and of course, like, then there's, like, you know, like, like, of course, half the games are so with, like, you know, Kiryu, which I think is a spoiler. It's in the trailer. And it's like, well, what are they going to do for the next one? Like, are they going to, like, just, is it going to, again, focus on each one? Or are they going to do this again? So I kind of get why some people, are like, eh, and maybe I just need time to think about it. But, like, I was kind of fine with it. I get some people think there's probably loose ends or quite. I think that's the big thing. I'm sure there's people like I have so many questions and that's what's frustrating. But the nice thing about RGG is it won't be too long till we get more answers. Yeah, no, I, I'm very interested to see where they go next with the series from here. Yeah, but you've also been playing Shadow of the Earth Tree. Uh, yes, I've this as well. Yeah, tell me about so. It. I'm think about halfway through. So I actually had to take a break and finish Infinite Wealth because I was like, I had the first, pl I had this whole saga. I was like, ah, no, my characters are good. You know what? I'm just going to replay Elden Ring because I really never did like get replay it after I beat the first game. So it took me 50 hours to even get to this point to the DLC, but I did it. And I was like, hmm, I'm a little burnt out. So this might be controversial. I actually, I do feel like, at least in the beginning, I was like, this does feel a little bit of a step down, which I think may be because, like, you're just in this open, like, zone, which is what Elden Ring is, but 
I don't know. I just feel like oh, there's not as much to do. But then, like, and now that I've come back, I'm like, man, well, I think really, like, A, I think I see what people are talking about. A, the bosses are very good. And again, I've already seen a few. But what they call, like, the legacy dungeons, which, you know, is like, you know, the towns or the that, the first castle. Yeah. Man, I was, I was doing that yesterday and t- up to the, I think it's the vanilla fight. I was like, man. This first castle is really good. I love mm-hmm. the legacy dungeons. I think they get back that feel of like the older games of like kind not really linear, but like they're more linear and they're more about being interconnected instead of a wide open path. And man, those yeah. that's what's really getting to me. So after doing some exploration, I'm about going to what looks like the giant castle that you kind of see, which is also what I love about the DLC is you walk out and you're like, man. Just you actual... see, it's so beautiful, like the Vista. So, I'll tell I'm... you now, if you're going for all the Remembrance bosses, you are not halfway through. <laughs> I did not think I'm happy. I know this still a lot because I, I think I think I don't know obviously, but like I almost have most of the map unlocked. At least I think so. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I've really, but yeah. Basically, I think a the break of the week and now like kind of getting back into it, kind of understanding what this is now. I'm like, okay, it's coming back up. Because at first I was like, man, I don't know if this does, is as good as the main game, but it's coming but it's coming back in. I'm both I'm kind of terrified to see what this last boss is, but I've already done some preparation. I actually had to switch from, I was using, I've used a bunch of, I'm not my strength, but I've had to use a bunch of like weapons, mostly great swords actually just switched to a faster one and now i'm like really cutting through enemies i think that's also helping yeah i i i'm very excited for your uh, thoughts on the final boss you didn't get a spoiled for you right no uh, i haven't had too much trouble yet with the bosses yeah, when, vanilla, know. i know the only one i was a little mad that i was beating vanilla like she was like one hit away on the third attempt maybe even the second and then I died and it took me like, I don't know, six more attempts. And that annoyed me. But yeah, I'm also I'm looking forward to I boss think fight though, right? the best the boss fights or like. That's kind of why I'm looking forward to is like, I don't know any of them. And I've also been watching a lot of Vati videos, lore of Elden Ring, because which has helped make me understand a lot about what's going on. Not on this DLC, but in the main game. That helped me I kind of see, like, okay, this is what's going on the DLC. So I'm kind of really, like, looking... I'm still not actually understand what the hell is happening, what we're doing here. So that's also helping a lot. Very excited to hear more. Um, I know. That, I think... That, that, it's a real um, good DLC, Beef. It's a I know. game of the year quality. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Bench can be mad if I say the same. I was about to, <laughs> but I'll say if I... I was like... I'm starting to pick back up, and now that I'm kind of like looking to go into like what looks like the big like areas with some of the bosses that might hand me my ass. I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to see like what everyone's liking about it. So yeah, I'm really looking for the bosses because I've heard great things. Well, that's our podcast. I hope you guys mm-hmm. enjoyed a very intimate one-on-one conversation with. Yeah, B. we went for longer than I thought, still, but. Yeah, we had we did. I feel like we had plenty to talk about, like in depth. Yeah, there was the news was a lot more like talkative than we well, expected. Yeah. Like there's more gone, that we could say about it. Yeah, we may have gone tangents, everyone, but hopefully that was at least interesting stuff. Because yeah, I know there's not too much going on right now. We are in that July, the midsummer, very much just the gaming industry kind of takes a break uh, between yeah. SGF and Gamescom. Yeah, but I think everyone has noticed. <laughs> I think I, we should hopefully pick up back soon because yeah. there's a lot more. St- there's still a lot. There's still a lot coming out later in this year. I think I'm very excited to see what the rest of the year has planned for us. But that's it for today. Uh, if you want to check us out, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, follow us on Twitter. Every Saturday night, you get a new pod, or Saturday morning, you get a new Slice of Gaming podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Say good night. Thank you. Good night.